Grimy greetings and horrific howdy doodies, my nasty ne'er-do-wells. Your repugnant proprietor of putrid pictures has reappeared. And today's tasty, tentacly treat is truly terrible in all the trashy tears. 2014's Call Girl of Cthulhu. A lanky labor of Lovecraftian lore highlighting lusty ladies and lascivious lads. So let's dredge up the Deep Ones and the Great Old Gods and see what is written in the Book of Ancients. We have 30 dead bodies, 29 cups blood, 48 cups monster slime, 16 naked breasts, internet porn, assorted sex toys, one used condom, whipped cream pasties, one crowning birth, vomiting prostitutes, Foot fetishery, snake titties, Cthulhu impregnation, distracted lesbians, virgin shaming, ass shaming, champagne ejaculation, belly tentacles, one mutant cocoon thing, excessive fortune cookie play, hero tells the movie after it's over cliche, douchebag neighbor cliche, heroic suit up montage cliche. Trapped heroes resort to sex cliché. Dildo down the throat. Fan blade to the skull. Two shotgun blasts to the chest. Bottle to the skull. Green vomit to the face. Knife to the palm. Baseball bat to the dome. Baseball bat stabbed through the skull. Spiky baseball bat skull cracking. Tentacle through the skull. Paint knife to the neck. Harpoon to the gut. Harpoon to the back of the mouth. Harpoon to the skull. Harpooned baby Cthulhu. Violent rectal thermometer insertion. Double decapitation. Face scratching. Tentacle groping. Vaginal tentacle face grabbing. Demonic feet throat slashing. Acidic golden shower face melting. Tentacle smothering. One tongue ectomy. One heart ectomy. One monster penis ectomy. One devoured dick. One twisted neck. One exploding head. Quadruple head exploding. Demon harpoon murder montage. Tentacled monster birthing. Sentient genitalia STD. And one non-consensual puckered face hole BJ. Alright, let's just get the big reveal out of the way. How did I feel about this one? Honestly, I have mixed feelings. On one hand, I love the schlock this one throws out. We get tons of skin, tons of oogie messy stuff, some fair practical special effects, when applicable, and for the most part, it's decently acted. But on the other, it does suffer from some issues. Most notably, too much low quality CGI. There's nothing here that truly feels like a deal breaker, but there's definitely something lacking in this one. I just haven't been able to put my finger on exactly what that is. <laughs> so let's jump into the story. Our movie is all about sheepish, nerdy virgin artist Carter, who does a lot of commissioned art and is forced to listen to his roommate screw like a wildebeest in heat. He's unsure of himself, gets walked all over, and cries while watching a porn star belittle him. Back again, loser? How old are you? And you're still a virgin? <sighs> You are pathetic. Jesus Christ, dude. Pick a different porn star. There's literally a fucking billion of them. Try finding one who isn't the digital equivalent of a cold bitch wife. You ain't married to her and you ain't having sex with her. <laughs> Move along to something else. Anyway, Carter is attracted to Riley, the prostitute who just happens to work in the rundown part of town he lives in. He seems to keep running into her when he does manage to leave the apartment. Eventually, Carter works up the nerve to call Riley for a session. But he's not interested in sex so much. He wants to paint her portrait. And after having some time to chat, Riley gets some feelings as well. And the two of them develop a bit of a relationship. Well, in between meetings with her kinky clientele, that is. Oh, Dr. West, I'm really sick. Will you take my temperature? I want you to shit on me. But 
but this is a movie based on the works of H.R. Puffinstein, I mean, H.P. Lovecraft. So, we gotta make with the indescribable nasties from the void. Enter Sebastian, who's all about the... Wars. He spends a lot of time hiring ladies of the evening so he can take a good, hard look at their dumpers. No, seriously. He's all about dad ass. Well, more specifically, the birthmark on Riley's ass. You see, Sebastian is the head of a cult that worships Cthulhu. Mostly because it's a more bankable name than Gatanatoa or Yig. And the prophecy says that Ashail Gorbachev here is the one who will bring about the end of the world. So he and his weird pacifier gimp henchmen, they all go looking for the one. And the only people who are able to stop him are quite incompetent and ill-prepared for their task, in spite of their badass eye patches and Cousin Eddie hats. In fact, when we first meet our heroic troop, two of them get killed almost instantly because they're too busy tonguing each other's face holes to focus on being the lookouts. Honestly, not splitting these two up during the heist, I'm putting that L directly on management. Our half-assed heroes steal the Book of Rituals from Sebastian and attempt to swap it with a copy, since destroying it is impossible. And that's how Carter gets involved. They see his work on a local magazine and hire him to recreate the artwork for the forgery. The tone of the movie is slightly silly, but when it's time to get serious, it doesn't fuck around. When the gore and violence comes into play, the silliness steps aside, with a few exceptions of some gory slapstick. And of course, there's a ton of tentacle action once Riley is captured by the cult. Without giving away too much, basically Riley is forcibly impregnated by Cthulhu, which causes all sorts of wacky shenanigans as it transforms her into a monstrous vessel for baby Cthulhu. Most notably, tentacle attacks and acidic piss attacks on her clients. Oh, and of course there's that whole sentient dick mutating STD she's got. I mean, who hasn't been here, am I right? Although I gotta say, I was a little disappointed to see that the dick monster came out looking an awful lot like the alien babies in Inseminoid. Oh, don't worry, I'll get to that one soon enough. Probably a lot sooner than you think. Wink. Carter suddenly finds himself dragged into the fight to save the world, which includes trips to the local strip club, altercations with Riley's mutated clientele, and a final fight inside the cult's headquarters as the ritual to raise Cthulhu is attempted. I'm purposely choosing to not go too deep with the spoilers on this one, because I kind of want you all to check this one out without knowing too much about it. For the most part, this movie is a lot of fun, but again, it just feels like it's missing something, and even after a couple of viewings, I still can't quite figure out what that something is. Although I will say what was my least favorite part of the movie, and that's the character of Squid, played by Sabrina Taylor-Smith. She was hands down the worst part of this entire cast. Generally, the acting level is about what you'd expect. Nothing super professional, but it all felt competent enough to get the job done. But Squid was easily the most phoned-in performance. And it got to where I was kind of dreading seeing her on screen, because I knew it wasn't going to be long before another line got delivered in her one-ply-thick, jaded, angry belching. There are some things man was never meant to understand. Ugh. Every time she speaks, it's like this. And it's really a shame, because everyone else is doing a much better job pulling their acting weight. Now on the other side of that coin, I gotta give props to Dave Gamble, who played Sebastian. He was a fantastic villain. Never felt hammy or corny in his performance, and you felt like he was an honest threat. There are a couple of moments where it could have devolved into a silly performance. Ladies, would you mind taking off your skirts? I'd like to look at your asses. Well, this is disappointing. But he's got a task to complete, and he stays on target the whole movie. 
And I appreciate the hell out of that. <laughs> the end of mankind. Also, it was nice to see Walter Delapore again, since the last time I saw him was in my review of Night Beast. So I'll be giving this one a halfway serious recommendation. Don't rush out to put it at the top of your watch list, but if you're looking for something and don't have anything else lined up on your streaming queue, definitely give Call Girl of Cthulhu a chance. It probably won't become your new favorite horror comedy, but at the very least I can say it's an entertaining 92 minutes. I guess I just have a soft spot for horror comedies that don't puss out and remain more horror than comedy, because so many of them fall on the other direction of that split. And until I greet you again for the next nauseous nummy num, this is your old pal Sugar Pants. See you in your dreams. stomach. Oh, me delicious. <laughs> 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 <laughs>